Hey Twisters, so for today's video, I'm going to predict the leading goal scorer for each NHL team ahead of the 2022-23 season. So I already made a video predicting the leading point scorer, right, goals plus assists. Watch that if you haven't already. So I'm actually going to start this video with 11 players who not only will lead their team in points, but also in goals. I want to know your biggest hot takes in the comments below, and let me know what other sorts of predictions videos I should make through the offseason, and stick around because we have all sorts of other content planned. So let's get started with the players who I think will lead their team in points and goals. And so I'm going to go through this really quickly. Toronto Maple Leafs, Austin Matthews had 60 this past season. Willie Nylander and also Mitch Marner had good seasons as well. And John Tavares has scored upwards of 47 before, but Matthews had 60. There's no way that anybody else on the team will top that. Boston Bruins, kind of same thing. David Posternock had 40 in a down season this last year. And I think that he could at least flirt with 45. Of course, he's a pending UFA at the end of this season. All right, so Pittsburgh Penguins, Jake Gensel. He's a two-time 40 goal scorer, including this past season. Crosby could still sort of flirt with that, and I wanted to put Brian Rust in consideration here as well, but he does have injuries. So I'll say Jake Gensel leads his team in both points and goals. All right, Washington Capitals, slam dunk. It's Alex Ovechkin. Nobody's going to get close to him. He's not really slowing down all that much at all. He had 50 this past season. New Jersey Devils, now Jack Hughes had 26 goals in 49 games, and Jesper Bratt had the same number of goals, but played 27 games more. Andre Palat, who could play on that line, he's not as much of a goal scorer, at least not in the regular season, so I think it's Jack Hughes. For the Philadelphia Flyers, I think Sean Couturier is definitely due for a bounce-back season, assuming that he's healthy. For the full 82 games, he's a two-time 30-plus goal scorer, and the Flyers do have other weapons out there, but again, I think that this is a good sort of revenge tour for Couturier. Minnesota Wild, Kirill Kaprizov, he had 47 this past season, and even if he does, you know, decline a little bit, I, I still think that he leads his team in goals. Ryan Hartman had 34 this past season, and Kevin Fiala was traded to the Kings, so I think it's Kirill Kaprizov. Winnipeg Jets, Kyle Connor now is going to be a consistent 40-goal scorer for a number of years. He had 47 this past season, and I think Nikolai Ehlers could get to 40 goals if he played a little bit more in terms of ice time, so I'll stick with Connor there. Arizona Coyotes, Clayton Keller had 28, I think, in 65 games this past season. Nick Schmaltz could definitely con contend for the points leader on that team, but he's more of the playmaker, whereas Keller is the finisher, and I think that he could actually have as many as 35 goals this upcoming season. Colorado Avalanche, I'm going with Nathan McKinnon. He can easily score over 40 goals in an 82-game season. He had 32 and 65 this past season, but I think Mika Rontanen will still be very close to McKinnon. And for the San Jose Sharks, Timo Meyer, he had 35 this past season. He's in a contract year as well, and so I think that he could definitely contend to at least get to that level again. Hurdle has scored 35 before, but I don't really see him topping Timo Meyer, considering they're going to play on the same line, and Hurdle will be uh, setting him up a lot more. Okay, now for everybody else. So we'll start with the Montreal Canadiens. I think a lot of people here have the same prediction, and that's Cole Caulfield. He had 22 goals in the 37 games with Martin St. Louis as head coach. And so with Suzuki setting him up, I think that he'll be at least around 30 goals this upcoming year. Buffalo Sabres. This one was pretty difficult because Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner just came out of nowhere this past year and had amazing seasons. Thompson had 38 goals. Jeff Skinner had 33 in a bit of a uh, renaissance season. I'm going to actually say Victor Olafson. I think that this guy has a great finishing touch, especially on the power play. He's scored 20 goals in 54 games a couple seasons prior, but uh, 20 and 72 this past year. But I think he's due kind of for a um, coming out of nowhere season, and I think he'll be around 30 goals, and that actually might be enough. And with the Sabres, they have other young talents who could possibly flirt with 30 goals this upcoming year as well. For the Florida Panthers, Sasha Barkov led the team in goals this past season, but I think he's going to be setting up Matthew Kachuk quite a bit this upcoming year. Not to mention, if Sam Reinhart somehow plays on that first line, he's at least a 30-plus goal scorer on that line. And so I'm going to go with Chucky on this one. He had 42 this past season, and he could possibly even build on that with those monster line mates of his. Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, of course, Steven Stamkos had a ridiculous season this past year, kind of a resurgence there. And Nikita Kucherov in a full season could at least be a 35-plus goal scorer. But I'm going to say Braden Point this year. He has scored, I think, 41 as his career high, but I think he's going to score at least that many this upcoming year. He missed a lot of the playoffs, and so I think he wants a full season, and uh, he's going to bury plenty of pucks in the back of the net this upcoming year. For the Detroit Red Wings, I did go off the board with this one. You do have Larkin and Bertuzzi, 30-plus goal upside easily for the two of them. And you have Lucas Raymond, who I did consider. He had 23 this past season. 
but I'm picking a dark horse here. I'm going with Jakob Verona, a full season, hopefully, fingers crossed. He is always injured, but he has scored upwards of 25 goals in 69 games before, and he had 13 in 26 games this past season. He's in the prime of his career. Why not? Let's go with Verona for this one. Ottawa Senators, this one is difficult because you do have Alex Dabrinkit on the team coming off a 41-goal season with the Blackhawks. You also have, of course, Claude Giroux, who was acquired in free agency. I'm going to go with Josh Norris, though. He had 35 this past season, and his shot percentage was over 20%. That's ridiculous. So he wasn't even taking all that many shots out there. If he pulls the trigger a little bit more, he could at least be a 40-goal scorer on this team. And with Dabrinkit, now he is coming off 40 goals, but the first time he scored 40 goals... The next year, he only scored 18 in 70 games, and it might take a little time for him to, to get acclimated in Ottawa. So I'll go with Norris. Don't sleep on Kachuk, and definitely don't sleep on Drake Batherson either. For the Carolina Hurricanes, now Sebastian Ajo, I say he'll lead the team in points. He had 37 goals to lead the team this past season. I'll go with Andrei Svechnikov. He will definitely play on that top line with Seth Jarvis and Ajo, and I think that he'll be the finisher on a lot of plays, and I think he's going to have a great season on the power play. He had nine power play goals this past year, but 30 goals in 2021-22. I think he'll at least be at around 35, and Ajo's going to be setting up Seth Jarvis a lot more this upcoming season, I predict as well. For the Columbus Blue Jackets, they got Johnny Gaudreau in free agency. He had 40 of his own, but I think he's also going to play a setup role on this line. So you've got Boone Jenner, who has actually scored 30 goals before, and you also have, of course, Patrick Laine. I think he's good for at least 34, if not maybe 37, 38 this upcoming season with Johnny Hockey as his line mate. New York Islanders, this one's pretty difficult, but Brock Nelson had 37 this past season. There was a nine goal gap between him and the next guy, that's Anders Lee. And there really weren't that many other weapons behind them this past season. But with the Islanders, it's a little difficult to kind of figure out who's going to get the most ice time. It could be pretty well evenly distributed. So I just decided to go with Brock Nelson as kind of the safety net here. He's probably going to score at least 30 this upcoming year. New York Rangers, it's hard not to pick Chris Kreider. He had 52 goals this past year, even though his previous career high was only 28. But I figure he'll at least be around 40. Mika Zibanejad certainly could flirt with 40 as well. He's done that once. He scored 41 in 57 games, but he hasn't been in the high 30s all that consistently. So I'll go with Kreider on for this one. I think that's just kind of the safe pick. St. Louis Blues were now in the Western Conference. Now, they had eight 20-goal scorers this past season, and so it's kind of hard to figure out who it's going to be. Uh, Vlad Tarasenko just came out of nowhere last year and had a resurgence with 34 goals, but I'm going to pick Pavel Buchnevich, who had 30 of his own and is now in the prime of his career. I did pick Jordan Cairo to lead the team in points, and he could certainly lead the team in goals, and the same could be said about Robert Thomas, but I'm going to go off the board and say Pavel Buchnevich. Dallas Stars, I predicted Jason Robertson to lead the team in points. He led the team in goals this past season, but not that far behind him was Rope Hintz. I think Robertson is going to develop as an elite playmaker in the NHL. I guess he already is, but he has the goal scoring touch. Now it's up about him sort of drawing the defense and setting up Hintz, setting up Joe Pavelski as well. So Rope had 30 goals in 80 games. Maybe he'll top 40 this upcoming season. Nashville Predators, I said Philip Forsberg. I am a little critical of him, but he had 42 in 69 games this past season. And, you know, Duchesne and Johansson had great seasons as well. But even if all of them regress, I think that Forsberg could still be around that 40-goal mark, assuming that he's healthy. But don't count out Tanner Janot. If he gets some time on the power play, I think he could get around 35 goals, assuming that he plays up in the top six. I really am looking forward to seeing him develop. But Forsberg for right now is still the elite goal scorer for the Preds. Chicago. Now, a lot of you would say, is there anybody else besides Patrick Kane who can score 25 plus goals? He had, I think, 26 this past season or 27. Ah, Lucas Reichel, at least right now, is projected to play on the same line as him. He added 15 pounds of muscle in the offseason to get stronger. He's the 17th overall pick from the 2020 draft. And this past season in the AHL with the Rockford Icehawks, he had 21 goals in 57 games. So, this guy could definitely put up some goals with Patrick Kane setting him up as that playmaker. He still is. Kane can still be a point-per-game player at least. So yeah, I'm going to say it's Lucas Reichel. Look out for that guy. All right, Calgary Flames. This is a team that has definitely made over their top six, right? They bring in Jonathan Huberdeau, who easily should lead the team in points. Elias Lindholm had a 42-goal season this past year. Nazem Kadri comes in through free agency. And on his wing will be Andrew Mangiapane. And I say that the bread, Mr. Eat Bread, 
<laughs> puts up 40 plus goals this upcoming year. He had 35 this last season. So with Kadri and with some of that grit from maybe Blake Coleman or maybe Peltier gets uh, called up there as well. I think that uh, Majapani is going to have a huge role on this team and stuff home a lot of goals. I know, Pane, Pane, it's Pane in Italian, so there you go. I learned Italian. All right, Edmonton Oilers. Now, McDavid could certainly be a 45-plus goal scorer. He probably will be. I said that he should have around 135 points this next year. But yeah, Leon Dreisaitl, 55 goals this past season. Just a tremendous power play asset. He's going to be at least at 50 this upcoming year, so I'll go with Dry. Next up is this team right here, the LA Kings. And I've selected Adrian Kempe. He led the team last year with 35 goals. Tremendous chemistry with Andre Kopitar. Although I'm curious to see how Kevin Fiala fits in. I think he had 32 or 35 of his own this past season. And both of them are in the prime of their career. So they should, I think, be 1-2 in the goal scoring race there. For the Vegas Golden Knights, I went with Jonathan Marshall. So a little bit unconventional here. He's a two-time 30-goal scorer. He had 30 this past season. Yeah, I think Jack Eichel would lead the team in points. And Mark Stone will have a nice bounce back, assuming that he's healthy as well. But I really think that Jonathan Marshall so is a shoot-first kind of player. And so he'll lead the way for Vegas. Vancouver Canucks. Now, this one's interesting. I did expect this player here to have a sort of career-defining year. He's a UFA at the end of the season. And I'm not talking about JT Miller as great as he is. It's Bo Horvat, and I know that he could possibly even be the third line center behind Miller and Pedersen, but, you know, I, I predicted he'd have a huge year in a previous video, and so I'll stick with it. He had 31 goals this past season. I'll say 36 this upcoming year. Mark it. All right, Anaheim Ducks. I'll go with Troy Terry. He had 37 this past season. Zegris is an elite playmaker, and I say that he leads the team in points. I'll go with Terry as the leader in goals. We'll see how long that lasts, though, because the Ducks have so much young talent coming up through their system. And lastly, for the Seattle Kraken, now I expect Matty Beneers to lead the team in points. He had nine points in 10 games this past season. And it is difficult to gauge the Kraken because they have a really good middle six, or they have a lot of guys who could score between like 23 and 28 goals. McCann, the guy I'm picking here, had 27 this past season. He's entering the prime of his career. And so I think that he could flirt with 30. Andre Burakovsky also got close to that this past season. He's another guy to talk about. So is Bjorkstrand. But we'll see how they do in their new environment here. I'll go with McCann, though. I think he's a safe bet to lead the Kraken. All right, guys. So what are your hottest takes for the leading goal scorer for each team this season? Sound off in the comments below and let me know what other kinds of predictions videos I should make ahead of this upcoming season. And I hope you guys are looking forward to that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and want more content like this. And see the video description down below where you can follow me on social media. And also fill out a survey if you're interested in more exclusive content as a paying member to Twisted Rister Hockey. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, I'm Nick. I'll catch you twisters later. Ciao.